the documents, which disturbed Fisher. He wrote to Atiyah as follows. Although I was already aware that your version of the discovery of these documents had caused considerable confusion, it was startling to read that you had informed me of their existence. While I have taken pains to avoid any outright contradictions of what you said, I do not see why either I or the other members of my department, past and present, should be put in the position of being ignorant about facts we could not fail to have known. The Metropolitan Museum gave, of Art gave the papyri back to the church in 1967, 40 years ago this November. The papyri have now remained in one set of hand for the longest time since their excavation. The papyri we currently have are 11 groups of fragments from three different papyri containing two partial copies of what is usually misnamed the Book of the Dead and part of a copy of what is usually misnamed the document of breathings made by Isis. The extant fragments do not contain any text from the Book of Abraham. We know what we currently have, but how much papyri did Joseph Smith have? Critics want to minimize the amount of papyri originally owned by Joseph Smith, preferably to an amount not much more than what we currently have because they do not want a Book of Abraham to have ever existed. As Richard Bushman has noted, people who have broken away from Mormonism have to justify their decision to leave. They cannot countenance evidence of divine inspiration in Joseph Smith's teaching without catching themselves in a disastrous error. So critics who have left the church cannot allow Joseph Smith to have gotten anything right, even by a guess or by accident. They will go to extreme lengths and propound convoluted theories to have something else, anything else to believe in. The critic Dale Morgan, in a moment of candor, wrote, With my point of view on God, I am incapable of accepting the claims of Joseph Smith and the Mormons, be they however so convincing. If God does not exist, how can Joseph Smith's story have any possible validity? I will look everywhere for explanation except to the one explanation that is the position of the church. So the critics cannot allow themselves to say as Latter-day Saints can say, whether or not there was a book of Abraham actually contained on the proportion of papyri that did not survive is something that cannot be determined by scholarly means. A Latter-day Saint who has faith, that is, trust in God, can examine such issues without being bothered or without having to know all the answers to all the questions we might have. In fact, insisting to, on the answers to all our little questions is a sign of lack of faith or trust. For example, if we insist that our spouse or employees must account for every moment out of our presence, it is a sign that we do not have faith or trust in them. Abraham, for example, was able to say, Thy servant has sought thee earnestly. Now I have found thee. Thou didst send thine angel to deliver me from the gods of Elkanah, and I will do well to hearken to thy voice. He trusted God on the basis of one past experience without having to know all the details about how the Lord was going to fulfill his promises. Likewise, a Latter-day Saint who trusts gods and his prophets, that is, spokesmen, does not need to see the actual Egyptian characters on the papyrus or know any of the details about the translation of the Book of Abraham in order to accept it and act with confidence that this life is a time of testing when God will prove us herewith to see if we will do all things whatsoever the Lord our God shall command us. This is the reason why, for the vast majority of Latter-day Saints, the particulars of the translation of the Book of Mormon are not an issue. Still, as all have not faith, and most of you are here either for a want of faith or a desire to help those who want faith, we are commanded to seek study, seek learning, even by study and also by faith. Learning is a partial substitute for and an aid to faith. So what do we know about the papyri Joseph Smith had? Between the current fragments and some very bad copies of characters from the papyri, we know that Joseph Smith had papyri or proportions of papyri from at least five individuals. Horus, the son of Osiris and Hebois, 
Semenes, the daughter of Eschons, Amenothus, the son of Tanub, a woman with the unique, unique name of Nufianub, and a man named Sisanchus. Comparing the copies of the papyri with the fragments indicates that in no case do we have a complete record of what Joseph Smith had from these two sources alone. Eyewitnesses from the Anavu period describe a quantity of records written on papyrus and Egyptian hieroglyphs, including one, some papyri preserved under glass, described as a number of glazed slides, like picture frames containing sheets of papyrus with Egyptian inscriptions and hieroglyphics. Two, a long roll of manuscript that contained the Book of Abraham. Three, another roll, four, and two or three other small pieces of papyrus with the astronomical calculations, epitaphs, etc. Only the mounted fragments ended up in the Metropolitan Museum of Art and subsequently given back to the Church of Jesus Christ. The eyewitnesses not only described the papyri, but they described specific vignettes or pictures on the papyri. When eyewitnesses describe the vignettes as being on the papyri mounted under glass, they can be matched with fragments from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. On the other hand, when the vignettes are described as being on the rolls, the descriptions do not match any of the currently surviving fragments. Gustav Seyfarth's 1856 catalog of the Wood Museum in St. Louis indicates that some of the Joseph Smith papyri were there. Those papyri moved with the Wood Museum to Chicago and were burned in the Chicago Fire of 1871. Whatever we conjecture their contents to be is only that, conjecture. Both Mormon and non-Mormon eyewitnesses from the 19th century agree that it was a, quote, long, or a roll of papyrus from which our prophet translated the Book of Abraham, meaning the long roll of manuscript, and not one of the mounted fragments that eventually ended up in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. So the intellectual position that some members follow, and which the critics would have us adopt as the position of the church, is not in accord with the historical evidence. So, how big were the rolls? One way to answer that question is to take the standard size for a papyrus roll and just use that. In the Ptolemaic period, a roll was usually about 320 centimeters long and about 32 centimeters high. I have used such decimates before, but those figures are not entirely satisfactory. As Mark DePau has pointed out in a later study, the measurements of papyri vary throughout the Ptolemaic period with different standards applying at different times. Now one can take a more scientific, that is mathematical approach because the circumference of a scroll limits the amount of scroll that can be contained inside it. Thus we can determine by the size of the circumference and the tightness of the winding how much papyrus can be missing at the interior end of a papyrus roll. Friedhelm Hofmann has already developed such a formula in calculating the amount of material missing from the end of Papyrus Spiegelberg, from which he was able to determine that there were five columns missing from the text. Now, I won't bore you with the derivation of the formula. It's up there. It's been in print for over a decade. But it boils down to this. If S is the average difference between the winding measurement and E is the last length, the length of the last, that is the interior winding, then the theoretical length of the missing portion is z. So that z is approximately e squared minus 6.25 over 2s minus e. We can apply this to the Joseph Smith papyri and can obtain some usable results. For the scroll of Nufianub, the final winding length is 7.8 centimeters and the difference is 0.33 centimeters. The formula says that there, is, uh, that there is 64 centimeters missing, which is just over two feet. Thus, this vignette was at the very end of the roll it was on. Unfortunately, there's no way of knowing how much is missing off the beginning of the scroll. For the Semene scroll, the final winding length is 14 centimeters, and the difference is 0.25 centimeters. Thus, there were 365.5 centimeters left on the scroll, and this is the equivalent of 143.9 inches, or nearly 12 feet. The vignette of jo on Joseph Smith Papyrus II, shown here, is the furthest vignette into the Semene scroll, and normally occurs about halfway through the Book of the Dead, which means that the total scroll would be about 20 to 24 feet long. 
And this is longer than some scrolls, but shorter than others. For the scroll of Horus, the initial winding length is 9.7 centimeters 